This is going to be video number 30 uh, in the series of tutorials for our Drive application. It is also the fifth one, part five of stage six. Um, and I'm going to dedicate this entire uh, video to explaining the code in the newest script we just wrote, which was Time Manager. To remind you, in order for Time Manager to work and to get rid of you know, those red squiggly errors, we needed to add to the application data a bunch of variables. We did that in Drive Main Script. So the last thing we did in Drive Main Script is add this block of code. Make sure, of course, you spell all of those correctly so they are recognized by Time Manager and all the squiggly lines are um, have disappeared. Now let's go over the code itself. The using, the libraries are the minimal ones, just the Unity engine and the UI. Then in the main class, we declared four public fields, which means of course they are showing in the inspector. We already populated them by dragging in all the different texts in the UI. Um, by the way, you can also do it by clicking, going to the scene and it shows you all the candidates here. It could be done either or, um, clicking that little, you know, browse button, but back to the code, back to the code. Uh, after that void start, we want when everything starts, which basically every time a lap starts, we want the variable called application data, my time to be zero. We're res resetting the clock. After that, the my time is going to run in something called delta time, which we talked about in the past. Let me remind you, actually tells you it's the completion time in seconds since the last frame. There are 72 frames per second. So it's basically a 70 second of a frame uh, of a second. Uh, take a second divided by 72. We actually saw that number. We can see that number in Unity by going to uh, edit project setting. We did it a long time ago and we went to time. It's this number. As a matter of fact, if I go one divided by 72, I get this number. This is by how much the timer will advance every frame. Now, if I show this to the user, they'll freak out. So what I need to do is convert that to regular minutes and seconds. And this is what the next um, lines of code are all about. Um, it declares a float called B minutes and um, B seconds. And it takes math floor to integer floor means it's always rounded down, right? Like uh, if we're uh, about to turn 30, then even the night before that, we're still 29. So we, when it comes to time, we always round down. Um, it does it too the best lap. First of all, you know, we don't have that yet, but we will have a best lap divided by 60 and also divides, you know, to get the seconds, we divide by 60 and get this is you know, the, um, this operator looks like percentage is actually called, um, I forgot its name, but it gives us the leftover. So for instance, if there's a hundred seconds, then it divides it. It's going to say, Oh, that's enough for one minute and a leftover of 40 seconds. Um, so this gives us, you know, uh, uh, the time of best lap converted to minutes and seconds. And in a few seconds, minutes, we're going to do the same thing to the timer. Then once we have that, we can say best lap text will be a string. It will say best for a uh, uh, completed lap with two placeholders, which will be the minutes and the seconds. Um, the lap count text will be the lap completed with the application data lap count to string. So it's going to say, you know, uh, lap count is one, is two, is three. The speed is something, these don't work yet because we don't count laps yet. This is going to happen in stage seven, uh, but they're ready for it. But the one thing that is working is that at the very beginning, the text called speed will show the application data Z velocity. This is how far the vehicle is moving forward two string and this is the format it's going to have two digits period two digits all this is like a reset void start is before the first frame it resets everything then update which will happen again and again every frame what will it do advance the time application 
dot my time plus equals don't forget the plus equals time dot delta time so time goes up by it's one divided by 72 which is equal to let me get that number again let me get that number it's this number back to my code this is by how much time will advance every frame now what it's going to do is call a function called display time. Now, where is that function? Right here. We're going to go over it in a second. And pass as an argument to that function, my time. It's going to say, hey, display time. This is the time I'm giving you. And it's going to look like something like this, like a very, very, you know, a decimal kind of number. So this line calls the function display time and passes the running time as an argument to it. And when I was developing this, I was also printing the Z velocity just to see what happens. So let's see what the function, so this sends us to the function display time. First of all, time to display plus equals one. So it'll increment through the time one more. Um, Float. This is going to be used later on. I'm not even sure I'm using it now. We might even get rid of that line later on. But again, it does the same conversion. A float called minutes, which takes the time to display, divides it by 60, takes the time to display, divides it, or, or shows us the leftover from 60. Um, and the time to display is this. The time to display is, actually, no, we do need this line. I'm going to take this back. Time to display is the argument that we passed to this um, function, and the argument is this running time. Every time we're going to add one to it, so one more frame is passed, and we're going to divide it by 60, and, um, and, and also see what's left. So, for instance, if it all adds up to, uh, you know, uh, whatever number of frames, uh, it's going to, let's say, uh, it ended up 100 seconds. So, again, it was going to say, oh, what's 100 seconds? Divided by 60, it's a one point something. But since we're flooring it, it's only one, one minute. What's left? 40. So, instead of 100 seconds, it's going to say a minute 40. And finally, time text dot text is going to put this lap, this and this in the format of minutes and seconds and this is how when we play it starts counting in seconds it constantly divides you know if we divide it if we divide it how many minutes how many seconds and it gives us a running clock going back to the code so we just explained the function time display. We had to jump to it because here we're calling it and passing my time. Time keeps advancing every frame by a 72nd of a, uh, of a second. Um, then we can start putting the displays in place. Speeds.txt is going to have the application data velocity. We want to make it a nice number because otherwise it's going to have a lot of decimals. So we're formatting it to a string that has two digits and two digits. This is a great way of formatting numbers, limiting how many digits can be on the left side and how many digits can be on the right side. So it's always going to show a double digit on the left and a double digit on the right. Um, the rest of those lines, like the... Uh, these are going to come into usage, like the best lap and so on, only when we have a best lap, which will happen only in stage seven. But we're getting those lines ready already. Um, and that's pretty much the end of this code. Uh, so we're going to have one more tutorial for this stage, stage six, where we're going to build, you know, some kind of like a little start gate in preparation for uh, detecting when we completed a lap and when we started a lap, like the start line and the finish line. Um, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Please check, uh, once you wrote that script, that when you play,
Time is running. And when you move forward, speed is running, both positive and negative.